Hi, this is PD at Bergzerk Arcade at bergzerkarcade.com, and this is tutorial 219. Now, these next few tutorials that I'm going to be going over will be about uh, working with particle effects, and there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to be doing with particle effects to create uh, different types of uh, spell effects, environmental effects, uh, maybe just effects that we want to be applied to our character at certain instances. And this is not going to be a, like a continuous mini, mini series like I have been doing. Uh, these tutorials themselves while I'm recording will not be numbered and I'll just work on them here and there and throw them out intermittently throughout the, the next few weeks uh, and mixed with uh, well whatever else I'm currently working on. Uh, so sit back and uh, enjoy. So I want to start off fairly simple in Unity uh, with particle effects uh, for people who have not played with one yet. And the first effect I kind of want to make is well something simple like a portal. Uh, that'll give most people a good chance to see exactly well, what the the most popular options are for a, a particle system. Uh, so let's go ahead and create one. So I'm just going to start off. I'm going to create a game object. I'm going to go down to create other. And I'll just click particle system. And here we go. Here's where it put it. I'm actually going to move that down a bit just so it's a little closer to the ground. Up a little bit more. Okay, so let's take a look at the particle system. Uh, this, when you first add a particle system, you get three basic components. You get the ellipsoid particle emitter. We get the particle animator. And we get the particle renderer. So let's start off with the ellipsoid particle emitter. Uh, let's open it up. Uh, the first parameter we have is emit, which basically just means, you know, uh, show the particles. And of course, if we turn that off, we'll notice everything just stops emitting. So let's turn that back on so we can see it. I'm actually going to try to zoom in on it just a little bit more. There we go. All right, so the next one we have affect the size of your particles. And it's the minimum size and the maximum size. So if you notice here, all these different particles when they're spawning, uh, you can set their, well, the minimum size that you want each particle to be and the maximum size. And if you have different sizes set here, uh, you'll get a bit of variation from one particle to the other. Now, min energy and max energy, uh, to me, it's a little deceiving. Uh, what it really means is uh, basically how long this particle is going to last in the world. So right now, it's by default set to uh, three seconds. Uh, so let's start changing some of these parameters. Well, actually, we'll cover these ones first. The min emission and max emission uh, is how many particles you want on the screen at the same time. And of course, if you have any sort of variance in these numbers, you'll at any one time have a you know a certain range of number of particles that you'll actually have on the screen. Now, I want to start creating a particle system that looks like a portal. And right now, it's, it's just your basic particle system. It's just a, a round ball of particles. So I'm going to start off. I want to give it just a, oh, I want them to be about the same size, but I want them to be bigger what they are now. So I'm going to say 0.5. Uh, min energy, I'm going to make them last for five seconds. So we'll just go in. And I'm going to keep it at 50 for now because I don't think I'm going to need any more. And if I do, I can always come back and add more. And let's go down to the next parameter, which is world velocity. And if we start playing around with these, uh, let's say like for Y, for instance, we cranked it up to, I don't know, two. We'll notice that these particles start shooting up in that direction. And it does take a, a few seconds to uh, switch when you change these parameters here, depending on what you have your mean and max energy set at. So for, just for demonstration, I'll put these back down to one second. And you'll notice even, even though I haven't changed where they, the direction they shoot at, uh, they don't go up near as high, simply because they don't last as, as long. And of course, you can do combinations of them. So now it's shooting back and kind of on an angle on the z-axis, uh, just up and on the z. Uh, for my particle system, for the portal, I don't want any world velocity. And of course, local velocity, same thing, but instead of using world coordinates, it uses its local coordinates. So if I switch that to two, and I'm going to crank these up a bit more, just so you can see it a bit better. So we'll notice it's, you know, it's going up. Uh, when you're using a local uh, velocity, though, if you end up rotating it, 
you'll notice it changes. If you would have stuck to world velocity, it'd still be going up regardless of the angle that the the particle system's actually pointing at. Uh, so that can be useful if you have, let's say you have a rocket flying and you always want the smoke to go up. Uh, you'd want to use world. Uh, but in some instances, you might want to have the smoke uh, aim in a certain direction uh, in relationship to the actual model it's attached to or whatever it's attached to. In that case, you'll want to use the local velocity. Uh, so let's go down and go to the random velocity. Oops, let me turn off the local because, again, I don't want any of that. And random velocity is just that. It just random velocity. If you take a look here now, it's going all over the place. Let me just move it up a bit. And it's going up and down. And of course, if you changed the other parameters as well, there you go. You just have something that looks like it's just falling apart, uh, which could be a desired effect that you want. But for my gateway, I do not want anything. So I'm going to close that down. And emitter velocity scale. The emitter velocity scale is basically when you're adjusting these parameters for world velocity, local velocity, and random velocity, you're affecting the whole e emitter's velocity. And the emitter velocity scale actually uh, transfers a certain amount of that velocity off to each pixel, or not each pixel, but each particle. So it's uh, just a way to uh, increase the amount of, or decrease the amount of uh, inherited velocity for each particle. And I'm just going to leave mine at default. Now your tangent velocity, this will affect your your starting velocity of each particle along its, the x, y, and z axis. And I'm not actually going to have anything in my tangent velocity for this system. Uh, angular velocity. Angular velocity will allow you to change well the velocity at uh, how your particles rotate. And I am going to be using this one here. And I'm going to start off just a pretty big number, let's say 10. And we'll zoom in. There's not going to be any change there. Uh, let me just move a bit more and take a look. And random angular velocity, uh, basically the exact same as angular velocity, except it sets each particle to have uh, a random velocity. And random rotation. This just allows the particles to uh, rotate randomly. And we have simulate in world space. Basically, if you have this on, and you move your particle effect. Uh, it's not supposed to follow. And if you turn it off, there we go. See how the particle effect follows the uh, the transform of, of your particle system? Where if it's turned on, whoops, turned on, you get that trail. It doesn't automatically follow, basically. And one shot. It'll go off and then just stop. And since the game actually itself is not running, it's just going to keep repeating on, on and off. Now your ellipsoid is basically, think of your particle system if you look at it, since we haven't really changed that much about it. It's just a big sphere. And you can adjust basically how this the size of the sphere. So these I do want to adjust. Uh, on my z-axis, I want to switch to point 0.1. Because uh, I want it to be portalish, so if you look at it now, uh, if you look at it straight on, it's still round looking at it straight on. But if you come to the side now, it's it's much thinner. And I might even make it thinner. Uh, we'll come back and take a look at it. And next is the millimeter range. Uh, basically, if, if you have it at zero, every, all your particles can spawn from the center. But as you start moving this out... Uh, you'll have particles not spawning in the center. So we'll give this a few seconds to catch up. And you notice there's fewer in the center now, right? And let's crank this up just a bit more. And there's even fewer in the center. So you're going to get more density on the outside. Uh, right now I'm just going to leave this at zero because I do want them to spawn in the center. So let's move on to the particle animator. And if we come down here, the first option is uh, does animate color. Uh, basically, will your particles change from one color setting to the other? And if we look over here, we have five settings for them. And of course, you can just click on them, and you can come pick any color you want. 
Uh, depending if you're using Windows or Mac, your color selector is going to be different. And the the color on top, this, this big white part, is the actual color. And of course, underneath is your alpha level. Uh, so let me just start off. I'm just going to pick, um, I want something fairly dark in the center, but not black. Uh, maybe a nice dark purple. And I want to bring its alpha down to probably about 25%. I usually like my starting and ending colors to be fairly low on the opacity. And at the very edge, I'm going to make them fairly bright. And I want to keep the same uh, coloring, but just brighter. So we'll go there. And then here, I just kind of fill them in. So we'll say the middle color. Uh, see, I picked there, there. Uh, that might not be quite what I want, uh, but we'll just pick some colors. We can always adjust them a little bit later on. And over here, I want kind of a bluish color. Not quite that blue. Let me see if I lower its opacity. It's a bit better. Uh, it's too blue. Maybe move in a bit towards this other color. So around there. And here, I kind of want a bit of yellow. And adjust its opacity. Uh, so I'll just leave it like that for now. I have different colors just to, to demonstrate how they work. Uh, so your world rotation axis. This will allow your particles themselves to rotate around a certain axis. And keep in mind that these are the world rotation axes. Or the, these ones here are using the world axes, while the ones underneath it will use your local axes. And size grow. Uh, size grow allows a particle to actually grow over time. And I may want to use that. It kind of makes it, um, well, the size of one. As particles tend, uh, as they spread out, they tend to seem to fall apart as far as your particle effect goes because while well, they're getting further and further apart, uh, with size grow, it allows your particles to actually get bigger over time. So the, the overall effect won't be uh, it makes your particle system not look like it's falling apart. One was obviously too big for this. So I'm going to say 0.5 because I still want to keep it fairly small. And that looks pretty good. Uh, random force allows you to apply well, random forces on the axes. Or sorry, on your, on your particles themselves. Uh, it can really bring particle systems uh, to life. And if we go ahead and switch one over to 10. And if we go ahead and switch one over to 10, I would also have these particles just shooting out all over the place. Now what I'm actually going to do is put this to zero. I'm going to come up on the X and actually maybe make a one. Because I would kind of like them to shoot out to the sides a little bit as they go around. Uh, maybe on the Y as well. One might not be enough, but you'll notice you have these little arms sticking out now, and that's kind of the effect I'm going to want a little bit later on. Uh, actually, this video is running a little bit longer than I thought it was going to, so we'll actually cover making the portal next system, uh, the portal system in the next video. And this one, let's just uh, go over the rest of these options that we have. So random force applies random force to each particle. Uh, force, you can actually specify in what direction you would like these forces to be applied in so that they're not random. So let's go down and again on X, we'll just do one. And there you go. It's flying out to the X. And of course, you can come down onto the Y. And there you go. Uh, now, this here can also be used to simulate wind and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to be using any of that. Uh, dampening uh, allows you to slow your particles down over time. Uh, setting a 1 means uh, they don't slow down at all. And if you lower it, as you lower it down, they'll actually start to slow down themselves as time goes by. And auto destruct will just destroy the particle system after, or sorry, the game object the particle system is attached to uh, when all the particles are gone. So we'll close that down and let's open up the particle renderer. Now the cast and receive shadows, the last time I checked, particle systems actually don't cast and receive shadows. Uh, so I've just always unchecked them. 
And I guess we could check them. And uh, let's actually go look in game, see if we're actually getting any shadows from it. And I'll come and look at it. I'm not seeing any. So I'm pretty sure they actually don't cast shadows. Now, it might be different if you're starting to use meshes and stuff like that with the particle system, but I generally just leave mine unchecked. Uh, the material, you can specify a specific material you want your particle system to use. And of course, you can also adjust the number of materials your system is going to use. I'm just going to stick to one. Now your camera velocity scale, when you start stretching particles, uh, when you're moving around, you can adjust how much you want these particles to be stretched uh, according to your camera. I'm just going to leave mine at zero. And stretch particles. By default, it's set to billboard. And there's other options here you can pick, you know, sorted billboard, horizontal billboard, vertical. Uh, there's also stretched. Uh, we will be getting into stretched in the next uh, tutorial, but for now, we're just going to keep it at billboard. And again, the length scale and velocity scale affect particles when they're actually stretched. The max particle size clamps the maximum size that a particle can be on screen. And your UV animation, uh, later on we'll be covering this here as we make some more advanced spell effects. Uh, but basically it allows you to make a sprite sheet of an, uh, of an animation for a particle effect. And you can tell it you know, how many... Uh, how many textures across and how many textures down uh, your animation is is on that sheet and, and how many cycles it's supposed to go through uh, but we'll be covering that a little bit later so that's pretty much a, a basic explanation of all the properties in your uh, particle system there are a few things that you can't add to a particle system if we come down uh, see so we have the mesh particle emitter well uh, you can just come up here and take a look there's, there's a few other options that we'll probably be looking at later on uh, but Unity has them all really well documented on their website. So if you really have any questions, you can probably find your answers pretty quickly over there. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this tutorial for, well, the basics of a particle system. And the next one, we're going to be going over to how to make that gate system. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.